Welcome to David Dudley Outdoors, and yes, I am super excited about this video. And why am I super excited? Because about a year ago, I was with a guy named Dale Black, who is the owner of Gamma Fishing Line, and we were out fishing, and he just brought to my attention something that I have never given thought. And when he told me this uh, uh, theory... I wanted to test it out for myself, okay? Not that I didn't trust Dale Black, but in theory it makes so much sense, but I wanted to see it visually for my eyes. So when it comes to braid and fluorocarbon, which is more sensitive? 90% of us are gonna go, braid is, you know, it's so much more sensitive than fluorocarbon. And I do believe that way. Braid is extremely sensitive. I don't care, you know, what lure you put on it. You know, you've heard people say, oh, I can feel them if they breathe on it. I can feel them if they push behind it. Uh, you hear all this kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> fluorocarbon is, to me, a very sensitive uh, fishing line versus monofilament. Monofilament stretches. Monofilament doesn't have the, as many molecules in it to uh, give you the same feel as uh, fluorocarbon. But let's talk about this. I was in the boat with Dale Black, and it was about a year ago, and we were just talking about lines. And he explained to me something that I just went, oh my gosh. And then my mind started spinning in saying, when should you use braid and when should you use fluorocarbon? And we're going to get into that in this video. And again, we're getting re I'm getting ready to show you a scientific test that, a scientific or an experiment test, I should say, an experiment test to where you can visually with your eyes see what I'm about to explain to you. Okay, so in theory, braid is very sensitive, we'll agree, but is braid sensitive on a slack line? Okay, slack line. If you were to get a bite when you had slack line in your, your hand, can you feel it? Okay, can you feel fluorocarbon? If there's slack line and fluorocarbon, can you feel that fish when he bites it better with fluorocarbon? Or can you fit, feel that fish bite it with slack line better with braid? So is braid still sensitive on a slack line? All right, so here's the test. I want you guys to see for your own eyes what this test is. And we're going to come back and explain. And I'm going to tell you when to use braid and when to use fluorocarbon. All right, guys, so what we're getting ready to do here is, again, I'm going to smack the book, and I'm going to zoom in so tight on this water because I want you to be able to see if there was any ripple at all, and there's only one way to do that. I'm not cutting. I'm not doing trick editing, but this is what I want you guys to see if on a slack line you can feel braid. So here's the book we're gonna use, and yes, I'm proud of this book. You may not know this, but my wife, A.J. Dudley, has written a book called The Feather. It's one of a trilogy, and yes, you can find this at ravencrest.com, ravencrest.com, and you can find it on Kindle uh, also, but The Feather, A.J. Dudley, my wife, one of a trilogy. So what we're gonna do, basically, I'm gonna lay the line inside the book here, and I'm really, now we know bass don't bite this hard, but I'm going to do it this hard so you can, so I can illustrate this example for you. So we're just going to lay the line in there and we're going to go, bam. Man, imagine if bass bit that hard. We're going to lay it in there and just lightly go, that's all we're doing. That's how we're getting our bite. As you can see, I got slack line, slack line, and here we go. All right, guys, I hope you like that experiment because it, to me, was so eye-opening to how I can utilize the two lines. So let's talk about when to use braid, when to use fluorocarbon. And guys, if you like this video, share this video, please. It does a lot for the channel. It helps us grow. Hit that like 
uh, button. And yes, most of all, hit that notification button and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys. We're growing like crazy and you guys have been so generous to me. So as you just saw with slack line, braid never vibrated the water. Now, as you saw with fluorocarbon, you could see the vibrations come through the water down, down to the sinker, blah, 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 all the way up to the rod. That is so fascinating to me because I've always had this mind concept that if you want to feel everything, use braid. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is a weakness to braid. So let's get into this. If you are using braid, uh, we know a lot of people use it for flipping, of course, flipping in grass. But, but now that I'm thinking about it, when do you really feel uh, a bite through braid? When is braid more efficiently uh, giving you the signals that you want? Whether it's a bite, whether it's coming over rock, wood, you're feeling the bottom, you're feeling your, your, your lure. Braid is only good when it's tight. Only good. If it is a tight line braid, you're going to feel everything. But when braid gets slack, you lose sensitivity almost 100%. You can't feel anything. Now, if you're flipping with braid, most of your bites are going to come like this. You're going to flip it in there. The lure is going to punch through something. And you might just see your lure, lure your, your line stop. Or if you, you know, whoosh, you, your lure just stopped and you pick up on it. When your braid becomes tight, that's when you're like, then you feel him. You don't feel if your line's going down, it just stops. The vibration didn't go up through your rod down to your hands. It only just stopped. Now, if you're using fluorocarbon and you're flipping with fluorocarbon or you're, say you're throwing a drop bait on suspended fish or whatever it may be, if you're flipping, if you flip it in that bush and it's going down and it stops, it can stop and you can say, oh, it stopped. Or it can go down and it's like, dunk. You're actually going to feel the bite better with fluorocarbon on a slack line. So if you got a lot of slack line in it, he can bite it. You're going to feel him. And I just thought it was interesting how fluorocarbon and the molecules and the condensity of it transmits all the way to your hands better than braid. Now, I'm a braided guy, okay? So when it comes to using braid, am I going to throw braid on bladed jigs? Absolutely. Anything that I'm using where most of my bites are going to be while my line is tight, say I'm uh, using a bladed jig, a swim bait, um, just a, a var variety of baits, braid is always going to be my number one choice. Very rarely nowadays do I go all fluorocarbon on my uh, fishing poles. If you are maybe fishing a big spoon, like uh, you, where you cast it out, you're like, and you're letting it fall, you know, one of those big Ben Parker spoons, I'm going to go to complete fluorocarbon. If you're jigging a spoon vertically like this, I'm going to go to fluorocarbon. I'm not going to use braid when I'm doing that kind of stuff because it's it's not an indicator on slack line. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this, this video. I know I learned a lot from that day and I always will continue to learn. Even though I've won $4.1 million right now, as of right now, in bass fishing, I still am always learning. Guys, thanks for watching this. Thank you for your subscriptions, su subscribing to my channel, and I'm giving you the double outro. Whew.